All right, guys. So today we're at the shop. Uh, I'm gonna start doing a little bit different videos than I normally do. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. Um, we're gonna do more like a vlog style, I guess. So I'm often at my buddy's shop, uh, working on things or watching him work on things, I guess mostly. But uh, today we have a F-150 in here. So here's Wayne. He's the He's the mastermind behind all the genius stuff that goes on. And uh, this is what we're working on. So it's like a 96-ish F-150, uh, straight six, 4.9 liter. And it's got a lean code. I guess it's already been to uh, three different mechanics and uh, none of them can figure it out. So Wayne in his wisdom said that we would figure it out. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, not a very big shop, but we just make stuff happen here. So, we'll take you along on this journey, and if any of you guys own any of these trucks, maybe it can help you out. The guy's done a bunch of work on it. We're not really sure what exactly. Uh, so we're just going to fiddle with some things and take you along for the ride. Alright guys, so we have a suspicion that it is a head gasket leak. Um, there are some vacuum lines we saw that aren't well, the way they should be. The connector, the ends are split because these have hard plastic lines. I'll try to show you that, but it's kind of hard to see in the back. Um, but we have a lot of milkiness at the bottom of the dipstick. Um, now he does make short trips. It is winter time here in PA, so that could be normal condensation. Um, so we're going to do a thing called a block test. And what that's going to tell us if there's any coolant in, or if there's any exhaust gas in the coolant, basically, is what it's going to show us. So it's a special tool you can rent from AutoZone, um, and you have to get special fluid for it. So basically, first got to drain some of the coolant. Yeah, you got to drain some out. You don't want the coolant touching the tool, so you got to take a little bit out. We've already removed some guys. I'm sure you don't want to watch us take coolant out for a minute. So we've already removed some, and uh, he's like going to remove. Get a couple inches. You want a few inches below the uh, neck there. And then we're just putting in another jug, which we'll recycle later because we're all about eco-friendly stuff here. Uh, also, um, here you can see this is the spark plug that the customer had taken out and uh, it's missing, it actually spins, which that shouldn't happen. Uh, we're not 100% sure what's going on here yet, if it burned off because of the lean code, if coolant helped. Uh, so we'll find that out, but that's something we found along the way. Okay, here's the kit for the block test. As you pick it up, you have a line. You add, you add your fluid. Yeah, there's a special fluid I was talking about, guys. Go up to the level, it's blue now. And what, if there's gas, if there's exhaust gas in there, that's gonna turn yellow on us. Yep. So but if you have coolant touch it, it's no good. So that's why you drain down the coolant level a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna go fire so now, this thing up. You got the coolant level down. Now what you're gonna do is start it up. And all you do is... You're basically sucking the air out of where the air gap is from you where we make took sure you don't get why we took some out because you actually have to suck the air out and that the carbon monoxide mixes with a special fluid. If there's an exhaust gas getting into the cooling system that will turn yellow. There are several different ways a head gasket can go bad. Uh, you can leak it into the oil uh, you can leak it into the coolant, you can leak it externally. So there's a couple different ways you can actually have a coolant or a head gasket leak. Um, I go over all of them, we're gonna do a compression test and a leak down test too. Yeah, so I don't know if you heard him, but uh, the next step is, well one, we're gonna pull out that spark plug that he put in new to see what it looks like now. Um, and, see, and then we're gonna do a compression test because that'll tell us if we're leaking, we could be leaking into the head gasket. We can do a leak down test so we can hear where the air is coming out of, uh, basically filling with compressed air. Uh, so there's a couple different things we're gonna try here, guys. Uh, I just wanna give you a little update of where we're at right now. 
Uh, also, uh, cylinder four is where the spark plug was messed up, uh, the one that I showed you guys, and that's in the middle of the head. And now on a straight six, that's your longest length. So if you're gonna warp ahead and blow a head gasket, uh, it will happen more in the middle because that's where the longest plane is for it to separate. But it's, it's looking like we don't have a coin. I don't see nothing. Also, another problem with this truck, right here, it has, it has a throttle body spacer. Sorry guys, I'm throwing you all around here. It has a throttle body spacer, which no matter what they tell you, does not do anything on a fuel injected motor, uh, unless it's like a TBI Chevy. But basically what a throttle body spacer or a carburetor spacer does is it gives you more time to atomize your air and fuel. Well, this is a dry intake system, so there is no such thing as fuel and air atomizing because the fuel goes right at the end of the intake manifold into the cylinder. So you're not doing anything. So I think we're gonna take that off as well. All right guys, so we noticed something fishy going on here. Uh, cylinder four is the problem we're having. And you see on this one, which I showed you earlier, this has rubber on it. This is the one that is all burned up and having issues. So that's the one the customer gave us with the car. Now we pulled the one out, which is actually back in the motor now, and it looked like it had a weird carbon trace on it. And then he broke the wire while pulling it off. Now if you can see in there, that's all melted in there. The spark plug threads were a little messed up, and we think what's happening, we think what's happening was uh, combustion gas was actually coming out of there because it doesn't seal on the threads, it seals on the uh, cup part. So we think that it was not sealing properly. One, losing impression. Two, it was, it was frying the spark plug and the wire. So we're putting it all back together right now. We're gonna clear the code and see if that was our issue. All right guys, so we got it back together. Um, I mean, we fixed the problem, uh, a problem. We didn't fix the problem. Um, but I think we did realize that P171 usually just means bank one. Uh, but my research on these trucks show that they have a bank one and bank two, uh, even though it is an inline engine. Uh, so we were thinking the problem was cylinder four, which is where we were having the issue or seeing signs of an issue. And uh, it says bank one, so that's one through three. Uh, so at this point, um, I'm not sure where we're at exactly but I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, Wayne is on a different page than I am. I'm sort of thinking fuel pump or leak in the exhaust manifold or the intake manifold possibly. Uh, he is thinking that there's a coolant leak, which I, I, I do agree with. I think there's some sort of coolant problem, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. At this point, we don't know. At this point, we're kind of at square one, but we did fix some issues there were with some vacuum lines and also, like I said, number four cylinder had issues with the spark plug and the wire again. Um, so we're not sure why it's getting so hot yet. Um, I think it was leaking exhaust gas out, but I really don't know. All right, guys, so we're back working on this uh, 96 F-150. And... Um, so we found a few things out. We compression tested it. And uh, cylinder one through three were 125. Cylinder four was 105, but it's leaking around the spark plug because we're having an issue there. I don't remember if I talked about that or not, but the threads are a little messed up. So it's leaking around. So I mean, that one's okay. But uh, cylinder six is 130. Now, as you can see, I skipped cylinder five. Cylinder 5 is 60 PSI. Uh, we got a problem there, boys. So, right now, we're making our own... Uh, we have a compression tester, but this, uh, this style spark plug is the old style, and our kit is a new style. So, you can see we busted up a spark plug, and uh, we're just going to put an air fitting on top, and that's what we're going to use. Now, also... I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys, but this is a spark plug I showed you that spun. 
Can you see that's rusty? It was broken inside of there as well. So, I'm not really too sure what we got going on with cylinder 4 yet. But, uh, you know, definitely cylinder 5 is giving us issues with compression. So, we're going to give it a leak down test. And uh, this is where we're at right now. Everything's just taken out. We're getting ready to do the leak down. So, I'll get back with you once we get that all set up. I gotta turn my adjuster to a set. Uh, okay, I'm on set. Now I'm gonna hook it up to the cylinder. Alright, guys, so we just did a, another leak down test. We spun the motor because it's really difficult with the valve cover on to tell which valves are open and if you're on the compression or the um, compression or exhaust or exhaust. Or or exhaust. Yeah, so it's it's difficult to tell what stroke you're on basically guys is what I'm trying to say. So uh, you know we did get the oil cap off. That has a bunch of junk in it and Wayne scooped a bunch of junk out of there as you can see. But again, he only lives, what, five miles from work. He doesn't drive it that often. So that's not 100% uncommon. Uh, but we're getting, we're getting a lot more areas pushing us to something wrong with the head or the head gasket itself. Um, we believe the head needs some work at this point. We're going to try to compression test uh, cylinder four, which is the one we kept burning spark plug wires and spark plugs on. Um, but those threads aren't so healthy in that hole, so I don't know how this is going to work out exactly. But uh, it was kind of cool that I heard I heard air coming out of the exhaust pipe, the tailpipe. It was kind of cool that the air traveled that entire way, which, yeah, of course it will. But, I don't know, you got to go through a muffler and through a catalytic converter and all that. I just thought it was kind of cool that you could hear the leak at the tailpipe. And also we heard it going right into the exhaust manifold as well. So, we're going to test out cylinder 4 here and see what happens. Uh, again, I don't think it's going to be accurate because we can't really seal the tester in there because we can't really get a spark plug to seal in there. So, we'll see what happens. Alright guys, so here's the conclusion on this uh, inline, si or inline 6 cylinder 4.9 liter. Um, cylinder 5 is shot. I'm sure the rest aren't far behind. Uh, compression was somewhere between 125 and 130 on the good ones. Um, probably should have really liked to see like 150. Um, but the one that was 60, it leaks out of the exhaust. Uh, we checked it, leaked out of the exhaust valve, right out of the pipe, checked it again, it leaked even worse. So there's no way possible we're on the wrong stroke. Um, everything was closed, everything was the way it was supposed to be. Cylinder was at top dead center, check that with a piece of wire. So, uh, we gotta see what the guy wants to do. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll let you know what he wants to do if he wants us to fix it. But, uh, right now the head's gotta come off and definitely get redone for sure. Uh, but is it really worth doing a head on a motor that has 200,000 miles on it? I guess that's a decision the owner has to make. Um, but uh, these motors, I mean, they're hard to find without a lot of miles on them. They were on F-150s, F-250s. Uh, you know, they were used as trucks back then. Ford made decent trucks for the most part, except for their wiring lighting on fire. But if you made past that, you were pretty good. So, we'll see what he wants to do. See if he wants to fix it. See if I can buy it at a good price. But uh, that'll wrap it up for that right now, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.